the world, I'm sorry. I should start with apologizing to everybody who didn't like episode 3. I really enjoyed it, the character development, the world building, the intrigue that left me with the feeling of wanting to know more, meaningful dialogue that isn't delivered with emotional range of a Google translator. This is the way. But after watching episode 4, I realized that all of those things, they have no place in Mandalorian. What was I thinking, man? Now I understand. This episode truly represents what Mandalorian the show is all about. And it's fucking hilarious. Let's recap this. After Mandalorians almost got killed by a gator, they decided, you know what? We should train. Yeah, man, we fucking suck. Yeah, what the fuck was that with the hoops? I don't know, man. Uh, let's shoot water for some time. Okay. There was something about this scene that was putting me off. And as someone who watched all videos from Corridor Crew, you could say that I'm something of an expert on VFX, you know. That's just my humble opinion. Let's break this down. I think the people in the middle are real, cause there is only one guy pointing up and I don't think they would animate only one movement. These animators are lazy bastards. Plus, we can see the fucking retard climbing like the 2 meter. What? Whatever, man. Also, the kicking seems like extra work to animate, so I think it's real. But then I found 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 7 hand to hand combat animations that are the same, just play in different speed. These two up front kinda look like real people. They might be real and then they just copy paste those all over the place. Oh, then the stick guys, I think there are like three. Oh, and here's the four sensitive Mandalorian. Look at this guy, man. Nice force punch, dude. Now, I, I, I don't know what's real anymore in this scene. Baby Greg gets some crabs and it's time for some baby fight. Hell yeah! Greg is facing young Kimmel. Begin. Point. The challenge is paintball. I don't know why he chooses a challenge where the baby has advantage or why he doesn't just triple shot him at the beginning. Fuck it. Kimmel boy loses to an infant and gets snatched by a fucking... Airmu? Well, it's a hard life in Australia. Anyways, they fly after him and run out of fuel. Is this the first time the jetpack fuel is acknowledged? This is real inconvenient. Anywho, the fat one says... It always gets away. Implying that this happened before. They fly after him, run out of fuel and they, they say uh, fuck it. So his first instinct should be let's not try to chase him with the jetpack. Let's try the ship. If anything, Bo should be the one with the instinct to fly after him using her jetpack. Not the guy who've been through this a couple of times, but we need Bo to look cool so everybody is retard. She tracks the birdie to its nest. Okay. They can't use their jetpacks, otherwise it would kill the kid. Can you imagine how many kids died before they figured out all these rules? This is the way. MC Hammer suggests to use Shree Hawk training team. Those guys used to hunt these big fuck of birds. So that's cool. And not stupid. I mean, this is not the way show. What the fuck? Anyway, they go after the emu. Luckily, Bo has all the fuel. She has all of it. Yeah. So, yeah. Then we go to Greg to forge of flashbacks and we see how he gets out of a Jedi temple. This shit pissed me off so get ready. 4 Jedi in tight hallway versus we see a uh, 4 clone troopers here. Somehow in this 4v4 2 Jedi's are dead and 4 clone troopers are dead. How? I don't know man. This is retarded man. What are these guys in the back deflecting man? What the fuck is this? In this whole sequence we see 8 clone troopers and 4 Jedi's. At the end the Jedi's are dead and there are 4 clone troopers left. What is this shit man? Why is everybody retarded in this show? Bad Batch did this like 100 times better. And I'm surprised they didn't show Anakin in a rope, you know, all these terrorists. He would just fuck them up, the clone troopers behind them, shooting them. Greg would just barely escape. Then we see Ahmed Best, which, you know, cool cameo, but I had no idea who this is. So for me it was like, oh, so Greg gets saved by a guy at school and a four faceless Jedi. Mm -hmm, cool, cool, cool. Apparently he wanted to suicide himself after Phantom Menace. Ah. Dude, what did you guys told him, man? You guys are meanies. Anyway, they leave on a scooter. And then we get to see Gunship. Oh, the coolest ship in the Star Wars. Uh, they hit the bike with their cannons and the uh, bike still works. 
The fuck? Look what he does to that building. Whatever. He drives into a tunnel and these fucks still can hit him. Anyways, he gets away. He lands next to a Naboo ship, but the gunship is right behind them. If only the gunship had something to disable other ships. If only the gunship had something like that. Anyways, the gunship lands next to them and everybody is shooting and then the Jedi leaves in the ship. But wait! There's more! You see? Coruscant has two more starfighters. Yeah, but uh, they still got away, so. This whole thing was retarded, lazy, unimaginative, poorly directed, but we get to see Jar Jar, so whatever. Back to Helmet Gang. They travel to the nest, so naturally they lay camp. Yeah, they need to sleep on it. They know the kit is safe because they read the script. After a good night's sleep they climb and I gotta be honest, I thought all those no-names vendors are gonna die. I was wrong. They get up there, find the babies and at the exact moment the emu mummy is back. I hope that I don't have to explain how fucking lucky is that the, the feeding time is just now. Now? Now? After night sleep and climbing? The feeding is now. It's happening right now. Okay. <sighs> The giant fuck of emu dragon landed somewhere and gently puts the boy down, swallows him whole and then waits a day before it feeds him to his kids. Somebody wrote that. You would think that I'm describing like a Ice Age scene or you know, but uh, Ice Age actually makes more sense. Anywho, Big Papa flies into her mouth and uh, mommy grabs the kid and flies away. They go after her. gets bitch slapped and Mando actually saves the kid. Yeah, this is the part where he's competent. I want this Mando all the time man, please. <laughs> you know Australia is pretty funny. You have done the highest honor of the creed, saving a foundling. Actually it was me. Oh, and they brought dinner. This was fun, except for the Order 66 that pissed me off for some reason. What's Ahmed's best email address? I'm gonna let him know what I think about him. 